Some of you will have seen a demo that we did at VMworld last year. Um, this slide is kind of stolen from that demo. Uh, the, this is just an, one example of a way that we're extending NSX beyond its sort of its traditional sweet spot inside a single data center. So today, you know, you see NSX kind of running in a data center, providing all these services. Um, what is increasingly happening is that uh, we, you know, we're finding that companies are moving some amount of their workload into public clouds, but by no means 100%. And there's sort of this consistent concern that you know, as I start having some of my workloads on Amazon and some on-premise, I don't have consistency of visibility or security policy across those different estates. And the uh, if I could get some of those features, say, directly from Amazon, then I'm potentially locked into Amazon. It's difficult to then move to a different cloud. So there's this got pretty strong desire to sort of have networking and security policy delivered in a way that is consistent across the on-premise environment and the public cloud environment and is independent of which particular public cloud I'm sitting on. And so the kind of high level picture is something like this where you have NSX sort of managing <coughs> networking and security policy for workloads on premise, but also managing networking and security policy for uh, workloads in the public cloud. So as I said, we did a demo of this in VMworld last year and we're in the, pro the process of productizing that um, as we speak. And so, uh, you know, the hope is that sometime in the, in the next year or, or less, hopefully less than a year, we'll, we'll have this available in the product. So it's not there today. This is a forward-looking part of the talk. Um, but the, the idea would be that, you know, anything you can do with NSX to create, you know, logical switches, logical routers, distributed firewalls would all be something you could do in, in both the on-premise environment and the public cloud environment. And the technical challenge for us is that in the public cloud, we don't control the hypervisor. Um, there is a hypervisor there, but we don't see it. It's just part of the infrastructure layer. And so we have to insert these services in a different way in the public cloud, um, which is why we, it's still a, a roadmap item as opposed to a shipping feature. But we have a pretty good handle on how to, how to do that. So that's kind of one example of how we see NSX moving from sort of primarily in traditional on-premise vSphere environments to, you know, moving to the um, sort of the, the more um, public cloud environments and, um, uh, sorry, we just got a small disturbance at the back there. Um, yeah, and so, you know, so getting, getting, you know, into a wider range of deployments. What about, you know, right now the new fad is SD-WAN. Right. And what's the thought? In <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm glad you brought that up. So I'll just I'll skip to my final slide, um, which I think uh, actually let's do all the builds here. Okay. So, um, so we've already talked about kind of you know this part of things. We talked a bit about the, the public cloud part of things. So you just asked about SD WAN. So you see branches up there. So. My attitude to SD-WAN is it's a completely natural adjacency for NSX. Um, the only thing that prevents us from kind of being in that market today is the fact that, as you probably know, there's a fair number of moving parts you need to actually have a competitive offering in the SD-WAN space. You know, some combination of routing protocols, load balancing across multiple links, you know, maybe a physical footprint, yeah. there's a bunch of stuff you need. So um, we see like what the SD-WAN guys are doing is a perfectly complementary thing to what NSX is doing. And we have um, some examples of customers who are looking to integrate their SD-WAN deployments with NSX. So a pretty simple thing we can do today is you can build an SD-WAN that creates an overlay between your data centers and your branches. And then that overlay looks like an underlay to NSX. So we can now, say, put hypervisors out at the branches and insert services out there, build firewall rules out there, have micro segments that get tunneled back across the SD-WAN. Uh, so that's exactly what we're doing with Columbia Sportswear. Um, they've spoken about this publicly and they're working with us and CloudGenix to have an integrated sort of NSX for micro segmentation that extends out to the branch using um, an SD-WAN solution to extend out there. So, so yeah, what I mean, it was more of a, you know, if you have a server out in a branch and deploy NSX Edge, Maybe there's two of them, you know, you know, once there's more features like, you know, looking for brownouts, and, you know, things like that, three route packets. But my question was more about leveraging edge or something like that 
as as the gateway or as as the SD WAN platform. Yeah, so I, I think it's tempting to to say we could leverage the NSX Edge as the SD WAN platform, and all I would say is that my honest assessment is today it's not a super competitive platform yeah. compared to the, what what the startups who've focused on that market have done. Um, so just to sort of cover out the rest of this slide, so the, like the high order bit here is that we see NSX as a networking and security platform for delivering these services to endpoints wherever they are. So you know we've established our foothold in the data center, primarily on vSphere, but increasingly on other hypervisors as well. Um, today we support KVM, we've got um, Hyper-V in the works. Um, We've already got existing integrations with virtual desktops and uh, mobile devices. So for example, if you have AirWatch running on a, a handheld device, it can build a tunnel back into a data center, and then you can use that tunnel to connect an individual application into a particular micro segment. So we, we've got that today. Um, we've, we've started doing some integrations with, um, with containers. So pardon me, from a, from a very um, sort of simplistic point of view, a, uh, a container you know, pre presents a virtual interface that's very similar to what a VM presents, and so we can apply security policies to that as well. Um, again, we demoed that in VMworld as well last year. Um, the public clouds we talked about, the branches we talked about, and I just had a fascinating discussion this morning with somebody about the, the IoT. I was initially a little bit skeptical when our crack marketing team put, put Internet of Things on this slide, but I actually think there is an opportunity there to do some of the same things of what we're doing with, um, say, handheld devices. That if you think about sort of having security cameras or industrial controls sort of sitting out there in the ether, you'd still like to be able to put them on their own independent micro segment and apply security controls to them. So something like an AirWatch tunnel to get out to those devices or to the gateway that controls those devices sort of feels like a reasonable architecture. I'm certainly not going to claim we have that fully cooked today, um, but I think it's a it's a direction that we see makes sense at least to be able to extend micro segmentation out to a, a, a very um, diverse range of devices. Um, so with that, I've used up almost all the time, and we can uh, talk about anything else that catches your attention. Yes, yeah, so this is all for transformers, correct? I'm assuming moving forward, this is transformers, not V, or what's um, so? I, t I tried really hard not to be very product um, specific today. Um, the, um, the, the capabilities that we're developing um, you know, in terms of like multi-hypervisor support and public cloud support, those are getting developed on the next generation platform, you know, aka Transformers. Um, um, it's, it's a little bit too early to say exactly how we'll break things down from a product point of view, because we're still actively developing new features on V as well. So um, I'd say take this more as a direction of what we're developing rather than a, a roadmap particular product releases. I haven't, you know, dove deep into NSX in, in quite a while. So, you know, what is the current story with, you know, um, MH and V and where is it going? Yeah, so so basically the, the overwhelming majority of our customers today are on V. And so our focus right now is, is on getting those customers successfully into production, getting more features into V so, you know, we can keep on getting more and more right. customers on there and mostly getting people to adopt the necessary process and people changes so they can get network virtualization deployed. Right. So the thrust today is really get people on V. Um, we have a small set of customers who are multi-hypervisor. Um, you know, those are on NSX MH today, and those are the candidate customers for the sort of the next versions of NSX that will have both multi-hypervisor support and the sort of the features that we're bringing in, like distributed firewalling, multi-hypervisor, for example. So. Our long-term objective is have a single product that has all of the good multi-hypervisor support that we've had, you know, in, in NSX MH, plus all of the the sort of you know distributed firewalling and sort of advanced features like that that have been on NSX V. Eventually, get everybody onto that common product. Um, but you know, the, the reality today is that V is the thing that's sort of most suitable for most customers, and that's where we're putting most of our focus. Cool. I could. I was just going to jump in real quick on that as well. Now, is this working? You guys got me okay? Okay. So part of the part of the um, the effort around marrying the rich network services that we have on the, the vSphere platform today with a multi-hypervisor support is we also need to drive um, changes upstream into major um, open source projects. So, for example, our, our developers have been working very, very closely with upstream Linux kernel development team 
to be able to push features up into the Linux kernel and have that mainstreamed in the Linux kernel so that then it begins to trickle down into all the distributions. So things like connection state tracking, for example, um, being able to leverage the connection state tracker in the Linux kernel from Open vSwitch, which then allows us to begin to provide stateful firewalling, aka distributed firewalling, on uh, open source hypervisors running Linux kernel. So there's a, there's a lot of uh, things that we have to do, and in some ways that development is constrained by the nature of the, the larger community that we have to engage with to drive those features.